Martin Street. Welcome. Welcome, Martin Street. Right now, we want to give him praise, all honor and praise, in Jesus' name. Can I have a hallelujah? Can I have a hallelujah? Good morning, church. Good morning. Come on, good morning, church. Let us put our hands together and bless the Lord. 
Amen. For allowing us to be able to see another day. Let us stand, amen, as we invoke the presence of our Lord this morning. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, again, Lord, we thank you. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, first of all, Lord, for just being able to wake up this morning and see the dawning of a new day. Oh, Father God, we thank you that you've allowed us to assemble here in your house of prayer just one more time. And so now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we know that you are already here. And so, Lord God, we pray now that you would move amongst your people and move, Lord, in a mighty, mighty way. And so now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we place this time of worship into your hands that your all wise and your perfect will may be done in Jesus name we do pray let the church say amen. amen 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 god bless you heaven smile upon you again we invite you to stand and sing along with our praise team as they usher us into the presence of the lord come on praise team sing Of the same, 
From the rising of the sun To the setting of the sun From the rising of the sun To the setting of the sun From the rising of the sun To the setting of the sun For he's worthy Worthy, worthy to be lifted up. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Again, we want to welcome everyone here to Martin Street Baptist Church for our Sunday morning worship experience. Uh, it's so good to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, well, we, we would welcome those that are watching online, but we're having some technical difficulties, so the streaming is not down, but uh, if someone asks you, we will post it later. We are recording the service so that we can post it later, but the streaming service is down right now. Amen? Amen. But again, it's good to 
have all of your smiling and beautiful faces here in the house of the Lord on this beautiful Sunday morning. Again, we greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we pray that it has already been a blessed week and a blessed worship experience thus far. Uh, right now, we want to pause for just a moment and call your attention to our weekly announcements. And again, we start by asking that you would please pray for our sick and the shut-in. Because again, uh, there's some that would like to be able to get out and about that would love to be able to come to church on Sunday morning, but they're not able. So those of you who know that there is power in prayer, and know that the prayers of the righteous do avail as much, we ask that you would please pray for them so that in your time of need, somebody will pray for you. Amen? Amen. Again, we want to remind everyone, again, uh, on Monday uh, of our weekly prayer call, uh, the information was in our weekly announcements where you just dial in. You don't need a pen. Uh, that's each Monday morning at 7 a.m. For those of you who would like to get your week started off uh, with community prayer, uh, we ask that you would please join us. <clears throat> again, membership is not required just to have an open heart to receive from the Lord. Amen? Amen. And now as we get, continue to make our way... Um, uh, back into our uh, renovated sanctuary on the on the second Sunday. For all your choir members, we hope today to send out a special announcement uh, today, if not today, but tomorrow, uh, with the songs and everything uh, for the first um, for the Sunday we go back, which is the second Sunday in March, which will be March the 12th at 10 a.m. And again, we're asking every lotty dotty everybody who's a part of one of our choirs uh, to please. And if you haven't been, but you know you can sing. It's a good time to go ahead and be a part of the music ministry, but we're going to get that information out. Uh, rehearsal will be on Thursday the 9th, and we really need you to be there uh, so that we can make preparations uh, for that Sunday. Amen? Again, uh, we have our Pastor Emeritus Banquet on Friday, March the 10th, uh, and if you haven't purchased a ticket, I'm here to tell you, you done missed out. We sold out. Come on, y'all. We that's a good thing. <laughs> Amen. We we completely sold out, uh, and I think that is a testament to uh, what we're doing and what the Lord is doing, and how pleased He is with the efforts and everything that we're planning to do uh, for our Pastor Emeritus, Dr. Bullock, and his family. So again, we look forward to all of you being there on Friday, March the tenth at seven p.m. Amen. But doors will open at six thirty. There's no assigned seating. So if you want to be fashionably late, you're going to be in the back. And you and your wife might not be able to sit together. So please remember, doors will open at 630 to allow people to start coming in and taking their seats. So please govern yourselves accordingly. But we thank God for that. And we praise God that um, we've been able to sell out. Uh, one last call, again, of you are interested as we get ready to transition back over uh, to the uh, sanctuary. Uh, if you're interested in serving in the audiovisual ministry, we need you. Amen. You don't have to have any experience. You just have to be able to follow a few instructions. Uh, the process has been simplified. Um, and so if you're interested, uh, you can give us a Sunday when you can serve in the audiovisual ministry. We'll be so hallelujah glad. Amen. For you to be able to serve. Amen. Amen. Well, as we move on, again, this is our final Sunday in our uh, Black History Observances. Well, first of all, uh, praise God, y'all look beautiful. Uh, whether you got on African garbs or not, you sure look good to me. Amen? Amen. Amen. So as we move on now, uh, we're going to stand and we're going to sing like we really mean it. Because y'all know some of us may not get a chance to sing it again till next year. Uh, a, a Negro National Anthem. Amen? Lift every voice and sing.
God bless you. Hey, one thing I neglected to do on last week, and I just thought about it this week. Again, uh, we want to thank those volunteers who came out on last Saturday and helped to set up the sanctuary building. That was a, a quite a bit of work that was done, but it looks real good over there. And we want to thank you all and praise God for each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. And y'all know I'm always highlighting achievements within our congregation. We want to say congratulations to uh, Winston-Salem State University. They won the CIAA Championship Men's Basketball Tournament last night. Amen. Amen. And we want to say congratulations to the Lady Vikings of ECSU who brought home the Women's Championship on yesterday afternoon. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, God bless everyone. We're going to move on now in our worship experience, and we're going to have Deacon Aaron Springs, our Deacon of the Week, to come and lead us in our Sunday morning scripture and prayer. Amen. Morning, Martin Street. And I'm going to iterate what Pastor said. Y'all looking good. I might have picked me a bank of the roses today, the flowers. But again, good morning. My scripture will be coming today from the NIV version of Isaiah 40, 1 through 8. Isaiah 40, 1 through 8. And it reads thus. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The round ground, the rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I say, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all thy faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord bow, blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, we come humbly before you bowing in your name. We worship and praise you for being the great I am and for sending your son Jesus down to live with us to teach us and to die on the cross for all of our sins so we may have eternal life with you. We strive to be more Jesus-like, but that old sin nature raises its head up and causes our free will to make wrong decisions. We ask for forgiveness for all the sins that hurt and humanity we have put on our fellow brothers and sisters. We thank you for each beautiful day of breath and life that you give us. We thank you for the season of Lent and this beautiful fifth day of the 40 days. We celebrate your trials and tribulations in showing us we can overcome anything with our belief in our Heavenly Father. Father, we ask you to continue to walk with our sick, widowed, and any that may have experienced death in the Martin Street family and extended family. We also thank you for the many blessings you have given Martin Street Baptist Church family. Please continue to bless our shepherd, Dr. Singleton, and his family. Please give him the guidance to move us through our next phase and continued phases of kingdom building and bringing others to you. We are a seasoned congregation, but give us the strength and the determination to plant seeds to bring the unsaved to you. If we plant the seeds, we know you will water the vine. We also spe ask special prayers for our youth and young adults. Nobody is a throwaway in your kingdom. We know if nobody will set, step up to work with them or protect them, 
that you will send your angels down to protect them. Lord, you also ask mercy on the world. Every day there is killing, another war, fires, floods, hurricanes, earthquakes, bad weather, man's inhumanity to man, etc. But we know this is all in your hands. You have an ultimate plan. Please don't let us get discouraged. Please don't let discouragement rear its ugly head in our lives. Let us keep our eyes on the Christ, on the cross, and in your precious name we pray. Amen. Yahweh 
one can describe him or compare to him. Our God, Yahweh. 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 for the ministry of music and ushering us into the presence of the Lord that we might be able to receive, hear from him at this time. So at this time of preaching and teaching from God's holy word, those of you who are able, we ask that you would turn with us to the book of 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. And our pericope will be verses 5 through 7. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 5 through 7. From the King James Version of the Holy Text. It says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Ye all of you, yea, all of you, be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time.
casting all of your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his holy word. Gracious and almighty God, again, we thank you, we praise you, and we honor you, Lord, for this tremendous opportunity that you have given us to once again come into your presence and worship and praise your holy and your righteous name. Well, Father God, again, we thank you for the songs of Zion that have been lifted up. We thank you, Father God, for the prayers that have been prayed. We thank you for all the precious people that are here under the, the sound of my voice. And so now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that you would speak to us from eternity. Speak to us, Lord, in such a way that we know that we have heard from you. And then as always, Father God, we pray that you will send a word, Father God, that helps each and every one of us to leave here today just a little bit better than we came. And so, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we do praise you. And now, Father God, we, your manservant, I pray, Lord, that you would hide me behind the cross that only you might be seen. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to my mind and you would speak through these lips of clay that I might give your word as you've given it unto me. And then as always, Father God, I ask for preaching power, the kind of power that makes preaching easy. And Lord, I ask all these things, your son, Jesus Christ, and our Lord and Savior in his holy and his precious name. Let the church say amen. amen. For the moments that we have to share today, church, on this fourth Sunday in February, I I want to talk today about making it through tough times. Making it through tough times. You know, church, if there's ever been anybody who can say that they've been through some tough times, it has been us. When I say us, I'm talking specifically about African Americans. In church, I want to declare today that it does not matter how many generations we are removed from the boats, from the plantations, or from the fields. The one thing that we all not ever forget is where the Lord has brought us from. You see, because contrary to what some may believe, church, we did not make it this far because of ourselves. We have not made it this far because of our ingenuity, our intellect, or our money. We haven't even made it this far, church, because we deserved it or we worked for it. But instead, I'm sure there's somebody in here that knows that we have come this far by faith. And I'm so thankful, Lord, that we can say that the Lord has never failed us yet. And that's why, church, because of the tough times that we've been through as a people, that's why I'm one of those that, that I don't get all bent out of shape because of who it is or what it is they're doing in the White House. I don't lose my mind because of anything that's happening on Capitol Hill. See, because the one thing that I can rest assured in knowing is that God is still in control. The last time I checked, God is still sitting on the throne. Which means, church, that yes, me may have to endure some setbacks. and We may have to go through some hard times. But if you know anything about where we have come from and the things that we have gone through, then you know that going through tough times ain't nothing new to us. And that's the message, church, that Peter is trying to get across to these new saints here in Rome. You see, because history tells us that at this time, church, the church was going through some very difficult times. Because according to the Roman history books, they tell us that Nero at this time had become the emperor of Rome. And if you ever want to know what kind of person Nero was, all you need to know is that Nero put his own mother to death. He had such a callous heart, church, 
that Nero, when he captured Christians, he would, he would dip them in oil. He would wait until nighttime and he would light them on fire so they could light up his garden. Those were some difficult times. So we believers in Jesus Christ, the one thing that we know that we have endured is we have endured some tough times. But the one thing that we can say is that Nero, not Nero or the slave master or Jim Crow or anybody else has been able to make us quit. And I believe, church, that the reason we haven't quit, we haven't thrown in the towel and we haven't said that we've had enough is because we've known that we've always had somebody on our side fighting our battles. And that person, whether you know it or not, has always been Jesus Christ. And so, church, I know that I'm not talking to everybody this morning, but I do want to talk to the few of you that can honestly say to yourself that I've been going through some difficult times. There's been things that have been happening in my life that has been causing me to hurt on the inside. I want to talk to those this morning that are honest enough to say that, yes, I may have a smile on my face, but what I've been going through doesn't really show on the outside. You see, church, because I've come today with some good news and some bad news. If you don't mind, I'll start with the bad news, and here's the bad news for all of us. Those of you that have been going through some tough times, the bad news is you might continue to go through some tough times. You see, because sometimes when you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, God causes you to have to walk for a long time. I know we'd all like to call out to God and God deliver us immediately, but there's somebody here can testify that it don't always work like that. But as I said, church, there is some good news too. And the good news is God knows exactly what it is that you're going through. God knows how bad it is, and God knows, most of all, that you can handle it. The reason that God knows that you can handle it, church, is because God has made you a promise that he will never put more on you than you can bear. So here it is, church, while you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, the one thing you got to be able to do is you got to be able to hold on until God shows up in your situation. Because God is not just a very present help from all our troubles, but somebody can testify that God is a very present help while we're still in all our troubles. And so, church, I, I just believe, again, that, that as Peter is talking to these, those modern-day saints at that time, I believe that Peter is sharing with them as he's sharing with us some things that we need to do if we want to make it through some tough times. First thing that Peter tells them that you got to be willing to do is you got to be willing to submit yourselves unto him. You see, Peter starts our text today by saying, likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. In order to understand what Peter is saying here, you first got to understand that Peter is not talking in terms of age. Not telling the young people to submit themselves to the older people. But instead, Peter is talking about wisdom and maturity. And what Peter is saying to them is that here it is now. This ain't the first time that we've been through something. In other words, Peter said that, that some of us can testify that this ain't the first storm that we've ever been through. Peter wanted them to know that if God was able to bring us out then, then surely God can bring us out now. And so those of you, again, that, that, can, that can be honest enough to say, that, look, I've been going through some tough times. What Peter is trying to say to you is, in the midst of your tough times, you do not have to try and reinvent the wheel. Nor do you have to try and figure it out all by yourself. But instead, Peter said, when you're in the midst of your most difficult time, what you ought to do is you ought to find somebody that's been through what you're going through, that have been where you are going, and you ought to ask them how the Lord had been on their side. You see, somebody here knows that the longer you walk with God, the more God will show you and the more God will teach you. 
You can see there are some lessons in life that you cannot learn all by yourself. There, there, there's some lessons in, in life that they don't teach you in school. And the reason they don't teach it in school is they know that there are some lessons in life that you cannot learn by reading a book. Some of us in here can testify that there are some lessons in life that you can only learn from experience. So what Peter was saying here to those new, inexperienced saints, is if you really want to grow and you really want to make it in this thing called life, then you need to submit yourself or place yourself under the authority of somebody that can help you with what it is that you're going through. And if you, Peter is saying, if you're going to submit yourself to anybody, then the person you ought to submit yourself to is Jesus Christ. Because some of us in here can testify that, look, when you submit yourself to Jesus, when you're in the dark, he'll be a light unto your path and a lamp, a lamp unto your feet. When you're stuck, somebody can testify, he'll make a way out of no way. Come on, somebody. When you're in the midst of a storm, he'll show up in your storm and he'll say, peace, be still. You see, church, I don't know about anybody else's Bible, but I can testify mine says that even in the midst of our storms, what we ought to do first is we ought to seek God. And I believe that when you seek God, when you find God, the first thing you ought to do is crown him as Lord. You see, but if you're going to crown him as Lord of your life, then you got to be willing to submit yourselves to his authority. And if you're going to submit yourself to his authority, that means that you cannot do what you want to do and you cannot live like you want to live. But instead, when you crown him as Lord, the new song of your life is, my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself to you. See, some of us want to crown him as Lord, but we want to sit on the throne. <laughs> you, you, you can't do that. If you're going to crown God as Lord, then you got to take self off of the throne in your life. And you got to submit yourselves to him. The second thing that Peter says that we got to be willing to do, Peter says is, you got to be willing to humble yourselves before him. Here it is, Peter goes on to say, yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed, he said, in humility. Peter makes it clear that God resists the proud. Now, I know you proud. I know you got your I love me wall with all of your degrees and photographs and I know you're proud to write your name with all the alphabet suits behind your name and in front of your name. And God is saying, but God resists the proud. But Peter says he gives grace to the humble. So humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you when in due time. If you're going to unpack this again, we got to start with this. Yea, be subject one to another. Because what Peter is saying here to all of us is that all of us have to see ourselves as simply a servant. He said, and when you look in the mirror, whatever you want to call yourself, pastor, make sure you end it with servant. Deacon, servant. Trustee, servant. Choir member, servant. Ministry leader, servant. No matter who you are, what you are, what you have done, what your title is, Jesus said you ought to see yourself first as a servant. And the reason he said that is, the truth of the matter is, there ain't no difference between a sinner and a saint other than a sinner ain't been saved yet and a saint has been saved by grace. That's it. And Peter is saying the reason that some folks 
keep going through a series of trouble. Some folks keep finding hard times is because they haven't learned to put things in the right perspective. You see, when you have not learned to put things in the right perspective and you cannot humble yourself, then God has a way of humbling you. You're so proud and high and mighty about yourself. God will put you in something that your little money can't get you out of. Come on, God, God, God will put something on you and God will say, you so bad, get yourself healed. Come on, God, God, God will put you in something and you say, you got it all figured out. Figure out how to get out of this. God says, if you don't know how to humble yourself, then I know how to humble you. The reason, church, that some folks haven't learned to humble themselves is some of us, the truth is, we don't know what humility is. Because humility is not a feeling. It's not an emotion. It's not something that you can pick up and put down when you feel like it. But humility, church, is having everything in your life in the right perspective. Humility is understanding who God is, and exactly what it is that God has done, done for you. Because when you realize that you ain't nothing but a sinner saved by grace, when you realize that no matter what you got on, when God sees you, all he sees is a filthy rag, when you realize that you never would have made it without having the Lord on your side, you stop patting yourself on the back and thinking you all that. But instead, you realize that has been the hand of God that has been leading you, guiding you, preserving you, protecting you, carrying you all the days of your life. And when you realize that, you don't mind humbling yourself before the Lord and giving God the praise that he is due. But here it is, church. Peter says, don't just humble yourself. But Peter said, be clothed. In humility. And what Peter is doing for us here, church, is Peter is giving us a picture from the Last Supper. You see, because when they would serve the Last Supper meal, the Peshaw Supper, the, 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 the rule in the, in the Jewish uh, household was the lowest person in the house had a job. Your job as the lowest person in the house was not to serve everybody's meal. That would have been one thing. But the job of the lowest in the house was to wash everybody's feet. If you know anything about the Last Supper, then you know that the folks that are gathered around the table, none of them wanted to be seen as the lowest. You no, know, the question that they wanted to ask Jesus is, which one of them were going to be the greatest when they get to heaven? And so realizing that none of them wanted to humble themselves and be seen as the lowest, then Jesus, the one who was Lord of Lord and King of Kings, the one who had all power in his hands, Jesus decided, he said, I'll humble myself. He said, I'll get down on my knees, and instead of you washing my feet, he said, I'll wash your feet. We get, we get so excited when this happened that Jesus could humble himself like this. But if you really know the story of Jesus' life, then you know that this ain't the first time that Jesus had humbled himself. Oh, Paul said that Jesus, he said, Jesus, when he spoke to the church at Philippi, he said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But he made himself of no reputation. And he took on him upon himself the form, not of a king, not of a prince, but the form of a servant. And he made himself in the likeness of men, church, and being found in the fashion of men, Paul said he humbled himself. And he became obedient unto death. And because Jesus, church, was able to humble himself, Paul said God has highly exalted him. And God has given him a name that's above every name. And at the name of Jesus, Paul said, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. 
So what, what Peter and Paul are trying to tell us is that if you're going to make it through tough times, and if you really want God to exalt you, then you cannot be exalting yourself. Don't nobody want you to tell the story about how great you are. I know, I know, you think everybody wants to know how hard you worked on the job and how you got the promotion and how it all depended on you, but God said that where does he fit into the story? God, Peter said that God resisted the proud, but he'll give grace to the humble. In other words, Peter said, when you learn to humble yourself, God will give you stuff that you don't even deserve. When you learn to give God the real credit, God will take your places that you could not take yourself. Because God realized when you get there, you're not going to take all the credit. But instead, you're going to say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, ain't no telling where I might be. But here's what I really like, church. Peter said that God will exalt you in due time. In due time. That's what I really like. In this time that Peter is talking about, Peter is not talking about chronos time. That's, that's our time. That's chronological time. That's, that's man time. But Peter is talking about Kairos time. See, this Kairos time, this is, this is God's timing, which means that it may not happen when you want it to happen, but it'll happen when God gets ready for it to happen. That's God's time in church. See, Peter wants us to be clear that God does when he wants, when he wants, where he wants, for as long as he wants. The thing about this Kairos time, church, God is trying to teach all of us a lesson is that he may not show up when we want him. But when he shows up, he's going to be right on time. <laughs> His timing. Time that was set before the foundations of the world. But God says, if you want these things to happen in your life, then you've got to be willing to humble yourself. But lastly, church, Peter says that if you want to be able to make it through tough times, you've got to be willing to cast yourselves upon him. Peter takes the final turn in our text by saying, casting all of your cares upon him. For he careth for you. The interesting thing, church, about this piece of text is that this word that Peter used for casting. This is the word eparuto, eparito. And it's only used one other time in the Bible. Those of you who knew on that Palm Sunday when Jesus was getting ready to make his triumphant entry into Jerusalem will remember that they brought unto him a donkey. And it said that the, di the disciples took off their garments and they cast them on the donkey. And it said that the Jesus then sat on the garments and he rode into Jerusalem. And what Peter is telling all of us is that, yes, hard times will come and hard times will go. But if you want to make it through the tough times of life, Peter said there comes a point when you have to stop trying to carry all of your burdens by yourself. This casting of garments is always an imagery for casting your cares. What Peter is saying is you got to learn to do like the disciples did, and you got to learn to cast all of your cares upon him. Because if there's anything that we all know about Jesus is he can handle it. And the reason, church, that Peter could give this testimony was because if there's anybody who knew something about tough times, it was Peter. See, Peter was there all through Jesus' ministry, so he saw the hate, the harm, and all of the hurt that Jesus had to go through. And Peter knew what he had done to hurt Jesus. Because Peter could remember that he himself had denied Jesus three times. But he also knew that despite his denials, despite his betrayal, Jesus never turned on him. Jesus never left him. But instead, in his darkest hour, in his roughest time, and in his biggest storms, Jesus knew that he could always call on Jesus. 
Again, all I'm trying to tell somebody is no matter what it is that you're going through in life, no matter how bad or how big it is, if you want to make it through the tough times, then you got to learn to cast yourself and cast all of your cares upon Jesus. Because Jesus did say, come unto me all ye that labor and a heavy burden. And he said, and I shall give you rest. Again, I don't know who it is that I'm talking to right now, but I believe, church, that somebody came in here this morning dressed up in all their African garb. But the truth of the matter is they came in here carrying some burdens. They came in here this morning carrying a heavy load. And the truth of the matter is they just didn't start carrying it when they got dressed this morning. They just didn't start carrying it yesterday, but they've been carrying this heavy load for a long time. God told me to tell me that it's your day to take off your garments, take off your cares and your concerns, and it's your day to cast them upon him. And the reason that God is going to you, allow you to cast yourself and cast all of your garments upon him is because God cares about you. That's right. After all the stuff you've done, all the times you've messed up, <laughs> like a good parent, God still cares about you. God is still willing to claim you as his child. That ought to be some good news for all of us. After all the stuff that we've done, God still says to us, look, <laughs> bring all of your bills, your marriage, your, your finances, your kids, your job, and yourself, and cast them all upon me. God said, don't leave here like you came. But instead, before you leave here, take off all of your garments and cast them upon me. Again, some of y'all may not have heard me say that because I saw some of y'all didn't even respond. So y'all know I don't normally do this, but just touch your neighbor and tell him God cares about you. I mean, I mean, that's a powerful thing to know is that almighty God who's sitting in heaven right now cares about you. He cares about what you're going through. He cares about the burdens that you've been carrying. He cares about the things that you've been dealing with. And he says, bring them to me. But more than anything, church, if you really want to know how much God cares about you, I say it every Sunday, and all you got to do is close your eyes and think about this fact. God cared about you so much that he left the comforts of heaven, came down through 40 and two generations, fashioned himself in the form of a man, made himself as a servant, went up on an old rugged cross. There he hung, bled, and died. He went down into a borrowed tomb. He stayed there Friday and all day Saturday, and he got up early Sunday morning, all because he cares about you. That ought to be a word to all of us the next time somebody come telling you, you know I care about you. Well, how much are you willing to go through to show me how much you care about me? Because Jesus went through, some, went through some stuff to show us how much he cares about us. And if they're not willing to go through something, they might not really care about you. They might care about what you can do for them, but they may not care about you. They might care about your money, but they might not care about you. Come on, let us bless the Lord in this place. Make, making it through tough times. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, again, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for, for being there, Father God, through in the, during the most difficult of times. We thank you, Father God, that you have never left us alone in the midst of our storms. But instead, Father God, you have always been there, even when we could not see you, Father God, we recognize that the footprints in the sands were left by you. 
And so, Father God, again, we want to thank you and we want to praise you for the things that you have done for us. We want to thank you, Lord, for where you have brought us from. We want to thank you, Lord, for all the great things you continue to do in our lives, the things that nobody else knows about. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus, again now, we've done everything that you've asked us to do. And we pray, Lord, that it was all pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And so now, Father God, as we open the doors of your church, we pray, Lord, if there may be anyone here under the sound of my voice that needs to be saved, that, that, that desires to give their life to you, we pray now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you would minister to their heart, that you would let them know that they too can be saved. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, do what only you can do. Then, Father God, we pray also for the backslider today, that person that has moved away from you, Father God, and that person that finds themselves uh, uh, in a far-off country, far away from where you desire for them to be. Well, Lord, we pray now that you would minister to that person, that you would bring them home, Father God. Bring them back into a right and loving relationship with you. And then, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the person that came today seeking a church home. They're saying that, you know what, I want to be a member of this great church. I want to be a part of what it is that you're doing. If that person is here today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would minister to them that you will let them know that the doors of the church are opened because you care for them. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus, again, we thank you and we do praise you, Lord, for the tremendous opportunity that you have given us to worship you today in spirit as well as in truth. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you again. We want to thank you all for joining us. Again, the doors of the church are open. If there's one that desires to be saved, I want to be restored into a right relationship with the Lord. Or lastly, I want to be a member of God's church. Is there one? Is there one? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Again, we thank God for what he's already done in this place. We praise God for each and every one of you that are joining with us. If, again, if you get a call from someone asking what happened to the service, we did, we did post that we had some technical difficulties. I'll do all we can to try and get the uh, message, I mean, the whole service posted uh, before the end of the day. Amen? Amen. We've been asked to do one other thing. For those of you that are able, right after the benediction, we want, we want to take a photograph. So if you are here today, whether you dressed in African attire or not, you are here. We want you to be a part of the photograph um, so that we can publish it and we can put it up on our social media page. So immediately after the benediction, if, if, if you, everyone will be so kind and so gracious, those that are willing and able, um, and come on up to the front, we're going to take us a photograph. We'll find somebody who's like, okay, I'll take the picture for you. Somebody always willing to do it. Amen? So in the most expedient way, if we can do that. Amen? Amen. So let us stand to our feet. All you choir members, be on the lookout for an email today. If you don't get the email today, I saw, I saw Deacon Brown. Praise God. Good to see you back in church, my brother. I... If you're a choir member and you don't get the email today, con hopefully he don't mind me saying this, contact Deacon Brown and ask him uh, what the deal is. But I can tell you, rehearsal is going to be on Thursday the 9th. And, all, and, and you're going to sing on Sunday the 12th at 10 a.m. But we really need you at a rehearsal for what we're planning to do on that Sunday morning. Amen? It ain't that you know the songs. We need you to be at rehearsal. Amen. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, again, we thank you, we praise you, and we honor you, Lord, for the tremendous opportunity you have given us to once again worship you in spirit as well as in truth. And Father God, we pray your blessings upon each person that is here under the sound of my voice. And as we get ready to leave this place, but never from your presence, again, Lord, we pray that you would go with us and that you would lead, God, and direct us along the way. And Father God, we pray that you would be ever, we, we will be ever so careful to give your name the honor, the praise, and the glory, because Lord, you deserve that no so much more. In Jesus' name we do pray. And now unto him who is able to keep all of us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding ecstatic overwhelming joy to the only wise God our Savior. Be dominion and power of glory and majesty this day, henceforth, and forevermore. And let the church say amen, amen, and amen. 
you may worship, you may go to worship our Lord in peace. And remember, wherever you are in Raleigh, all roads lead to Martin Street. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you soon. <laughs>